All right, so we have the Ludlum with a model 44-2 scintillator on it. This unit is capable of going up to a half a million counts per minute. As you can hear, it's very, very high already. It's set to times 100, so what you're seeing is zero to 500,000 counts per minute. As we approach the person with the Technicine 99, it goes immediately hard over. We move back, there's the person's legs right there. As we move back, it goes down. As we move forward, it goes back up again. So the Ludlum is actually unusable for any analysis because it goes hard over before it can get to the person. However, by taking measurements at two distances and then calculating the difference between the two and using um, uh, E raised to a particular value, we can actually determine what the reading would be if we were able to actually detect it, which we cannot. Let's see if the Geiger counter is a little more useful. We're already at 470, 450 counts per minute. Let's cut on the backlight that's in this Inspector USB model and see. Now there's the body of the person right there whose face I will not show for uh, secretive purposes. At 800 counts per minute, we barely moved. 900, that's just because I'm facing them. And the 140 keV photons are somewhat blocked by the uh, detector housing. As I approach, the sound will go up. Actually, let's cut the sound on. You'll see that we're at 1500. I think I need to reset that. 2100. 6,000. This is what we call distance inverse square. The number goes up sort of faster than you might suspect. <clears throat> but as you can see, Technetium 99 treatment is very radioactive. <laughs> Just two or three inches more and we're at 17,000 counts per minute. Let me cut the light on. And in fact, let me go so far as to open the back of the unit up showing the actual detector itself. As we approach their body, and hopefully they don't mind me putting the detector right on them as they deal with me, um, we hit 89,000 counts per minute, 94,000 counts per minute. Wow. At this point we are in fast response mode with the detector because it is detected that we're in a high radiation environment. Switching over to millirankins, which are not accurate, of course, because of the energy, but we say that we're around 27 millirankins. It's actually a lower value than that. This is set for 662 keV photons. He is emitting 140 keV photons. There's a difference. Regardless, for anybody who thinks that nuclear samples are unsafe to have in your house, I like to think about how much radiation one gets off one of these tests. Last but not least, we will attempt to see what the detector here, let me cut the volume up, what the... CDV700 does. The CDV700 is in times 1 mode and it goes immediately hard over. Setting it to times 10 mode, pulling off the detector with the beta shield exposed, goes completely hard over. Setting it to times 10 mode, so now we're from 0 to 30,000 counts per minute, we finally get a decent reading. We adjust the detector to be pointed right at the dead center of his body, and let's see where we get. 1960s technology at its best. 20,000 20, counts per minute. The CDV700 is insensitive enough to detect correctly. So the last thing we should probably do at this point is perform a gamma spectroscopic analysis using this Gamma Spectacular GS1100A uh, and a 44-2 Ludlum detector here. This is a uh, one inch sodium iodide thallium dope detector which is currently calibrating against some cesium-137 samples. This is the voltage driver right here set to 700 volts and we are currently building a spectrum right here of cesium which we will soon use to find out what's inside of him. Okay we've been running the analysis for a short time uh, to give you an idea with the light on here uh, right over here by the computer I'm at 300 maybe 400 counts per minute here is the person, and over by the detector itself, this is the detector, I'm getting 500. Well, we'll give the detector a little bit of time to build up to whatever final number it gets to. As you can see from the actual screen here, um, if we take the um, mouse and put it right on down here, see this is a, Gauss, a Gaussian correlation, and this Gaussian correlation shows that the um, 
the centroid is probably right here, even though it doesn't appear to be by our eyeballs. The computer's a little bit smarter than we are at figuring out where the actual centroid is. And as you can see, the centroid is at 131 keV, which is only 9 keV off of the actual centroid, which we just happen to know is, should be 140 keV, which is just a difference um, slightly in the... Um, interpolation of the, um, uh, uh, what is it, the calibration. Basically put, the calibration is not exactly perfect right in between the two calibration points. In fact, we're almost right at the worst possible place for the calibration. Also, x-ray fluorescence is causing it to be off by a little bit, but we can pretty well be basically sure by looking at this that what we have is, um, oh, what is it, uh, technetium 99. So I'll so show you some stock footage now of Technetium 99 in the various locations I found it. Um, pretty much always stuck inside a person getting the heart tested. And of course you can see the detector is at 1300 counts per minute. And people say that my uranium collection is dangerous. And then people go to the hospitals and get themselves stuck with orders of magnitude greater amounts of radiation. And nobody seems to have a problem with that. So, just pointing that out. Anyway, this is Tom from anti-proton.com. Enjoy the stock footage. Show the hand for perspective. Ridiculous. Congratulations.